Chinese leader Xi Jinping flies to Moscow next week to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin, his first visit since Russia invaded Ukraine. It's a powerful show of Xi's emboldened diplomatic ambitions and Beijing's support for Moscow. China's foreign ministry said the country's, quote, proposition boils down to one sentence, which is to urge peace and promote talks. Beijing has tried to present itself as a neutral peace broker on Ukraine, publishing a position paper last month calling for a political settlement and casting Xi as a global statesman with fresh momentum after helping Saudi Arabia and Iran broker a historic deal to restore diplomatic ties. But Western leaders are skeptical of Beijing's portrayal as a mediator. Xi and Putin declared a no-limits partnership last year when Putin visited Beijing for the Winter Olympic opening ceremony. Xi has met Putin in person 39 times since becoming China's leader, even exchanging gifts, including pandas. China has refused to condemn the invasion or even call it an invasion. Instead, Beijing has parroted the Kremlin's misinformation while blaming NATO. On China's heavily censored social media, it's all hearts and thumbs up emojis in response to the government's official post about the state visit, with comments like, hope Russia will win soon, hope there will be world peace, and long live China-Russia friendship. Beijing has also strengthened economic and military ties with Moscow by boosting trade and holding frequent military exercises. Western officials have raised concerns that China may be considering providing Russia with lethal military aid. Beijing has denied the accusation. Last month, Putin told China's top diplomat Wang Yi in Moscow that relations between their countries are reaching new milestones. The two nations, bound together by their shared vision for a new world order, no longer dominated by the West. And while Xi has spoken to Putin multiple times since the invasion, virtually and in person, he's not yet had a single phone call with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. Though Ukraine's presidential advisor says negotiations about a potential Zelensky-Xi conversation are ongoing. As Xi heads to Russia, the ability of China to help resolve the conflict hangs in the balance. And Jake, the two leaders, Putin and Xi, they share this deep suspicion towards the U.S., which they believe is bent on holding China and Russia down. But at the end of the day, it's not a truly no-limits partnership. Xi only wants to help Russia as much as it helps China. Now, if Xi Jinping does end up speaking with Zelensky, that could help Beijing repair its relationship with Europe, which Xi does not want to align too closely with the U.S. on restrictions targeting China. So Xi really wants it both ways here, a relationship with Russia and to be seen as this responsible global leader, Jake. All right, Selena Wang, thank you so much. Today, the Kremlin is dismissing the ICC arrest warrant for Putin as, quote, outrageous and unacceptable. Let's bring in CNN's Fred Plykin. And Fred, do Russian officials, do they deny the charges against Putin and the top official that they forcibly remove kids, some of whom have parents, from Ukraine? Hi there, Jake. Well, they're certainly not denying that they're taking children from Ukraine. However, the way the Russians have been framing it, and you're actually right, they're, they're, they're making a pretty big deal out of it and actually putting it out there on TV, claiming that they're actually saving and helping these children. One of the interesting things that I actually just heard a couple of minutes ago, and I was messaging uh, with the spokesman for the Kremlin, with Dmitry Peskov, and I asked him, look, do you think that this could cause problems for Vladimir Putin when he tries to travel internationally or generally internationally? And, and his response was sort of trying to brush all of this off just a couple of minutes ago. He was telling me, let's not overestimate the importance uh, that this body, meaning the International Criminal Court, has internationally. As you said, of course, the Russians are saying that they don't recognize the jurisdiction of the ICC. However, it is indeed the case that the Russians have been putting it out there on TV that children are being taken from Ukraine and are being brought to Russia. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, Vladimir Putin was on TV with the uh, chairwoman of uh, the Children's Commission in Russia, who today was also part of that indictment as well, who's also been indicted, where there's a warrant out for her as well. And she herself said that she had taken in, as she put it, a child from Ukraine, a 15-year-old, uh, she said, the Russians are claiming that these children are orphans. The Russians are claiming that it's something that they think is a service to these children, that's helping these children. Obviously, what we're hearing from the ICC is very different to that. They are saying that this is essentially a forced deportation of, this, of these children. 
And of course, speaking to some folks uh, in Ukraine, as we have been over the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months, there are actually parents still in Ukraine whose children are still stuck in Russia, at, in, in some cases, with families that they don't belong to. And people are having trouble getting these children back. So the Russians definitely not hiding this. However, the Russians obviously saying that there's nothing criminal in their minds, at least, about this, despite the fact that you have this ICC warrant now in place, Jake. <laughs> All right, Fred Pleitkin, thank you so much. Joining us now to discuss White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby. Um, Admiral Kirby, do you think President Putin will, realistically speaking, ever actually face accountability in, in front of the International Criminal Court? I think that remains to be seen, uh, Jake. Um, I don't know that we uh, we can define what the end state's going to look like here. And as you know, the ICC, the prosecutor there, he's an independent actor, and and they'll have to work on the evidence that uh, that they have before them. What I can tell you is uh, a couple of things. First, we're going to stay committed to helping Ukraine as they document and analyze and preserve the kinds of evidence of the war crimes, the atrocities, the crimes against humanity that have occurred inside Ukraine at the hands of Russian forces. And, and number two, that we are not going to back off our belief that accountability for these war crimes has got to be had, however long that takes. So theoretically speaking, if Putin were to go to the G20, or if Putin were to go to the United Nations General Assembly, um, let's just do the General Assembly one. The U.S. is not a signatory to the ICC, so the United States is not under any legal obligation uh, to detain Putin and hand him over to The Hague. Um, but would the U.S., if Putin comes to the United States for the U.N. General Assembly, uh, would President Biden tell law enforcement to nab him and turn him over to the ICC? We, we obviously want to see uh, anybody, any perpetrators of war crimes held to account. I, I, I'd rather not get into a hypothetical situation about whether he'll come to travel here to the United States. I find that very, very unlikely. Uh, and, uh, and, and again, I wouldn't speak for uh, the ICC in their, in their processes. What needs, to what needs to happen here uh, is that Russia needs to be held to account. The perpetrators of these war crimes have got to be held to account. And, and, and in the United States, our, our friends and partners will find uh, uh, a country that will be willing to work on that uh, for the long term. Well, what about an, uh, a country like Israel, for example, which is, I believe, also not a signatory to the ICC, uh, but one that is closely allied with the U.S., although it also is, uh, has a relationship with Russia. If Putin went to Israel for a trip or another country like, say, like India, where I believe the next G20 is, also not a signatory to the ICC, would President Biden ask Netanyahu, ask Modi, please arrest Putin and turn him over to the ICC? Those would have to be sovereign decisions that those leaders make, Jake. That, that they're going to have to make those decisions. We want to see accountability here. We're going to keep working on that. I get it that it's their decision, but would, would President Biden ask them to do that? Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm just not going to speculate on a hypothetical like that, Jake. I mean, uh, we want to see the perpetrators of the war crimes here. The, at the hands of the Russian forces, we want to see those responsible held to account. We're going to keep working with Ukraine to, to document uh, that evidence, to preserve that evidence, and to continue to support as we have a range of international investigations, including the one being done by the ICC. A Putin advisor says that, that Putin's going to meet with uh, his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, uh, to discuss the war in Ukraine next week in, in Moscow. Um, what's the latest intelligence on whether the Chinese Communist Party um, has decided whether it will give Russia uh, weapons to pummel Ukraine with? We don't have any change to speak to today, Jake. Uh, we don't believe that they've taken it off the table still, but we also don't see any indication, any confirmation that they're moving in that direction or that they have done, have done that, have sent lethal weapons. Uh, clearly, we don't believe it's in China's best interest to do that. We don't think it's in their interest. It shouldn't be in anybody's interest, quite frankly, uh, to help Mr. Putin continue to slaughter innocent Ukrainians. What's the latest intelligence on whether or not this ICC arrest warrant for Putin might actually have the effect of weakening Putin within the Kremlin as opposed to uh, strengthening him. I haven't seen any intelligence uh, since this announcement this afternoon that would lead us to th those kinds of conclusions. I mean, it just they just now laid this out there publicly, so I just haven't seen anything that would uh, point us in one way or uh, direction or, or another. I, I think it's important to remember, though, you talk about you know weakening. Russia is clearly weaker now than it was a year ago, at least militarily speaking. I mean, they have expended an awful amount uh, of their weapons and capabilities inside this war in Ukraine. They've lost thousands and thousands of soldiers and key 
keep losing them every single day. Mr. Putin has achieved exactly none of the strategic objectives he set out to achieve uh, a year ago, and the Ukrainians have now clawed back more than 50 percent of the territory that the Russians first took in those first couple of weeks of, of the war. So there's no doubt uh, that, uh, that Russia is suffering from this war, and the Russian people are too. Today, Slovakia became the second NATO member to announce that they're going to send fighter jets to Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, do you feel comfortable? Does President Biden feel comfortable allowing allies to send these planes to Ukraine, knowing that the U.S. has one of the biggest militaries in the world and is not doing the same? It's not about us allowing them, Jake. This is a sovereign decision that Slovakia is making, Poland's making, uh, and we respect that. The whole idea, the whole fight in Ukraine is about sovereignty. It's about independence. It's about a country's uh, ability to make its own decisions, and Slovakia and Poland have that right as well. Uh, we respect those sovereign decisions. Both of these countries have been helpful in supporting Ukraine, and the more we can all support Ukraine, uh, the better that Ukraine will be, and hopefully the faster this war will end. Admiral John Kirby, thanks so much. Appreciate it, sir. You bet.